In the last video, we saw something that was actually potentially really startling. We saw that we can rewrite a division problem as a multiplication problem. That even works in whole number division, right? If we have like 6 divided by 3, that's 6 wholes divided by 3 wholes. So that's 6 wholes times 1 third. 6 times 1 is 6. 1 times 3 is 3. Divide the numerator and denominator each by 3. And I get 2 wholes. Now, that may seem a little bit disingenuous because I had to do a whole number division in the process. But we can understand the process of dividing by 3 as multiplying by 1 third. And that fact, that division can be rewritten as multiplication, actually explains a lot of things. Ultimately, what we find is that division is just multiplication in disguise. Why is that neat? Well, that's neat because it means that all of those nice things we know about multiplication we can extend to division by rewriting. What do I mean by that? Well, okay. Multiplication is commutative. I can switch the orders. But division isn't, right? Order matters in division. If I say, for example, 50 times 783 divided by 5, you know, I'd maybe want to do the division first. And it turns out that I can do that. Right? I rewrite that as multiplication. I use the commutative property to switch the 783 and the 1 fifth. And the associative property says that I can go ahead and do this first. And if it makes things easier for me, I can even write it back as division now. So 50 divided by 5, that's easy, that's 10. And multiplying by 10 is also easy. Because we can rewrite division as multiplication, we can extend those nice properties that multiplication has to division. Another thing that this shows us is this explains why multiplication and division have to come at the same time in the order of operations. Because they really are the same operation, just division is written in a weird way. Now, there's a word for this property, and the way I'm going to state it is going to feel weird at first. I'm going to state this by saying every non-zero number a has a multiplicative inverse, 1 over a, such that, well, the number a times the number 1 over a is 1. In this context, that notation 1 over a is just the notation for the multiplicative inverse. What actually are these? Well, the multiplicative inverse of a whole number actually looks like that. So, for example, if we take 7 times its reciprocal 1 seventh, right, we'll have 7 wholes times 1 seventh. That's in what sense 1 seventh is the reciprocal of 7, right? If we write 7 in the form of a fraction, it's 7 over 1. Multiply, I get 7 over 7. And indeed, that's 1. The multiplicative inverse of a fraction, which we might write as p over q, is its reciprocal q over p. 
So for example, three-fifths times its reciprocal five-thirds. Three times five is fifteen. Five times three in the other order is also fifteen. And again, yes, that's one. You can see that we'll always have these patterns when we multiply a number by its reciprocal. So you can see that, in fact, this will always give us the multiplicative inverse. Notice that I stated that property in terms of when I multiply these numbers, I get 1. It is a fact that we can always divide by a number by multiplying by its multiplicative inverse. The reason why is actually a little bit tricky to show, and we'll see why this is the case in the future when we have a little bit more of the machinery of algebra at our disposal.